What is up everybody and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time seeing a video of mine, welcome and I hope you enjoy what you're going to watch. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about adding details to paintings. So I'm going to be going over things such as how I set up my paintings and how I figure out what time at which I can start to fine tune my details and how I know where and where not to add details at. So with that let's get into it. So I usually like to start off with a line drawing, especially for portraits or figure paintings, just because there's a lot of measurements that I want to make sure are correct. And then once I have that where I like it, I usually go in with the background, just so that when I start adding on the tones for the figure or whatever I'm painting, it kind of pulls those colors through and it kind of makes the piece look like one solid cohesive piece instead of like it's on multiple different layers. And then after that, I kind of just start to mess around with where I want different elements in the painting to be placed. And this kind of has this very messy feel to it at first and kind of like this not really working all together quite yet, but it kind of has, but I kind of have an idea of where I want things to be placed. And it's pretty much just up to me putting things in different places and seeing if I like it there or not. And if I don't, I can quickly just um, take it away or move the different elements in front of it to kind of get the balance that I want. And by doing this, it really helps to make sure that I have all the different elements where I want them to be before I start adding on the details. Because if I just have an idea of what I want in the painting, I can make the mistake of going ahead and adding in an element and then spending so much time on it by adding in all these details. And then later on, when I start adding on other details, I might find that I actually don't want that um, piece of the painting there. So in this painting, for example, I'm putting in all these different type of flowers and these different elements in the hair, like these different braids and stuff. And so I could have gone in and been like, okay, I know I want there to be flowers in here, so I would add a flower and then I would completely detail out the flower. And then I would add on different flowers. But then as I'm doing that, I might see like, oh, I actually didn't want that flower there. So either I'm going to have to select it and move it around and it's not really gonna quite fit in another spot as it did in that initial spot. So it's gonna look a little bit off. It's gonna look very cut and paste at that point, just to move things around. and by just putting things in very quickly just suggesting kind of with silhouettes it's much easier to move things around and you're more likely going to save a lot of time and make sure that everything is in the right spot and once i get to a point where i am satisfied where everything is placed then i will start to go in and add details but even still i don't add exact details to each element at a time it's more of i just continue to add higher and higher levels of detail throughout the entire painting and this also helps to make sure that everything is balanced out during the entire painting process so i have a better idea as to seeing if the painting is still balanced or not and this kind of also goes into more of understanding where you should add details and where you shouldn't add details and this becomes easier and easier the more that you practice or the more that you paint and um, study other artists and see how they go about adding in the different details and stuff. So what exactly do I mean by this? I mean that there are certain elements of a painting that you may want to be the focus and there are different things that you could do to make these different spots a focus. Either you can have a higher level of contrast, so very light and very dark right next to each other. And things that you usually have a lot of contrast on, especially for portraits, is the eyes. And a lot of times people make the mistake of making eyes really big because they want that to be the focus and they make the eyes too big and it doesn't actually look real. But what you should do instead is you should have the eyes be one of the biggest areas of contrast. And for this painting it was pretty easy because her eyes are completely white and then with the shadowing around her eyes really helped to make those areas pop or to draw your focus into it. Um, but another you, um, but another thing you could do is you can add higher levels of details in the areas where you want 
people's focus to be. It's kind of like in photography where the background is going to be a little bit more out of focus and all these different areas in the foreground could also be a little bit out of focus. And then the one spot that you want people's attention to go to is very, very crisp and it's very, very um, in focus. And you want to do the same thing with your paintings. And even in landscape paintings, um, artists do this especially because when you go out and you see a landscape, there are, when you're looking at the different elements while you're painting, everything looks crisp. But artists will want to have the um, observer focus on the elements that they find interesting or the parts that they find beautiful. And the way that they do this is they highlight these different areas, even though in real life they may not be highlighted. And this then draws the person into the landscape that the artist wants them to look at. They're like, hey, I find this spot really, really beautiful. Look at this. And then they will manipulate the rest of the painting to have that focus drawn to that one part, even though it's not there in real life. And so you want to do this with all of your paintings. You want to have this element of, hey, look at this spot. And then once you look at that spot, hey, look at this other spot as well. So you wanna have these different spots of detail throughout the painting and you want to have this motion throughout the painting as well. You want the eye to continually move around the painting instead of being stuck in one spot. So yes, you do wanna have the focal point to be the most detailed, but you also want different elements of detail throughout the entire painting as well, just so that the eye doesn't get stuck on one spot. And this allows for the painting to be become so much more interesting because there's so much more going on and there's so much more you're like, hey, look at this. I know that that over there is really cool, but hey, look at this as well. And this really draws a person into your painting and it really makes it feel alive and it makes the person seeing it want to look at it more and more. And it keeps drawing them back and they're like, hey, I know I saw this one thing last time, but I have a feeling that there's more things I, that I can see. And so they'll be drawn more and more to your artwork that way. So pretty much you want to have the base structure of your painting looking correct and you want to make sure all of the different elements are in the correct spot before you start adding in details. And it's not like there's just this one point where you're going to go, yes, this is the time where I can start adding in details. It's more of like this continual moving around of different elements and being able to not focus in too much on um, adding in those details and just like keep on building it up slowly over time. And then once you kind of have a spot where you're like, okay, this looks pretty real, then you could probably zoom in a whole lot more and start adding in those little fine tuned details. And while this is going on, you also want to be taking into mind where you want the focus in your painting to be, where you want people's eyes to be drawn to, and how you want their eyes to move throughout the painting. Usually a good rule of movement in a painting is a figure eight. You want the eye to be caught in one spot and then be drawn into the shape of a figure eight on your painting. This really helps to have this continual flow of movement in the eye so that people would just continually find something interesting throughout your painting. Okay, that is all I have to say about adding details to painting, so I'm going to let the rest of this video play out so you can actually watch it happen.
thank you everybody for watching my video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.